We're ranking all the pre-cons that came out this year from worst to best. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us nitpicking nerds. Video every day. Best channel ever. Support us on Patreon. We would really appreciate it. Thank you as much as we can without making you uncomfortable. Yes. Everything is a everything is a question. Uh, if you want to support us indirectly, what you can do is you can go to tcgplayer.com, buy the cards you wanted anyway at the exact same price, and we get a kickback based on you starting with our affiliate link. Thank you already for doing it. Moxfield sponsor. Somewhere in the middle? Guess it now. You're going to be wrong. Happy birthday to everyone whose birthday happens to fall on today. You're cool, and we're the only channel that cares about birthdays. So what we're doing for this video is a big one. 24 precons came out this year. For reference, last year, 15 came out, and we said in that video, oh boy, that's a lot of precons. So we were gonna we're gonna try to get through these. We're going from worst to best. And Cherries, what are the list of criteria we're talking about? The criteria is we're gonna talk about the commander, the original price of the deck, what the value of the deck is today, reprints, new cards, synergies, duds, that means poopy cards, mana base. And the ramp removal and card draw doing the basics. Yeah, they're all going to conform together and give us the rankings of these precons. We'll let you know what we think about all of them, and we're going to do it. Coming in dead last at 24th place, it's Draconic Descent, commanded by Furkrag, Cunning Instigator. And I'll say right now, this deck was all over the place. Yes, uh, the original price of this deck was $50. We have the original price for most of these decks being listed at $50. But I remember specifically with decks like this, uh, this one being one of the least popular from it, that you could get it cheaper at like 40 or 45 depending on where you were looking. In fact, right now, if you go on TCGplayer.com using our affiliate link in the description below, you can get it for $40. Value of the cards today, $45.77. For reprints, we got Propaganda, Reliquary Tower, and Curse of Opulence as like the only relevant ones. Curse is nice, but it's not really expensive anymore. Uh, Reliquary Tower is becoming a card being printed in a lot of precons. I think that's going to be just like Pajuka Bog. It's going to be down to a dollar soon enough, which is awesome to see. Curse of Opulence was a really, really good one at the time. It's, yeah, it's not that good anymore as a reprint. Like it's only like three dollars now, but it wasn't original. It was a ten dollar card until this reprint, so that was nice to see. Yeah, rock solid. Notable new cards in the deck. Really, only Astral Dragon and Spectacular Showdown. Uh, you're not going to see those cards very often. They're very niche. Astral Dragon's a combo, a weird combo card. And, Spect and Spectral Showdown is a gold card. It's not really, yeah, like yeah, you said, you're not seeing them. Exactly. As far as what the deck is trying to do, it's, it's filled with, it's very easy to make players attack each other, which is what Furkrag wants you to do, but we're really low on dragon synergies, and I think there's just a lot of, like, weird stuff in here. For Duds, we really only listed Aether Gale and the Acroan War, but I just, what did you think of this deck? Yeah, my thing with, like, this deck is that it's good at goading overall. But I want to mention, goading is an extremely weak strategy in Commander as you move up in power. This will be fine in lower power games that are 100% combat, and that's it. Because this deck falls off fast, even if you upgrade this to the maximum version of what this can be, it'll still struggle in pods in 6 or 7 power, which isn't even very high. Yeah, so for, let's go to the mana base. It's really simple with these. Most of the time there's like between 20 and 30 basics. Bunch of fixers and like a few utility lands. This one had 24 basics, 8 fixers, and 6 utility lands, which is kind of nice. 11 ramp, 10 removal, and 5 card draw. But the problem with all this, the deck kind of wants to goad instead of remove, so there's not as much removal as I would want. There's only 10. And then 5 for card draw is like unacceptable. You're, you're super reliant on your commander in this deck. Like this deck is screaming, if my commander gets removed, I will run out of cards very, very fast. And it's 5 mana. It, yeah, it's Ooh. it's it, that is exactly what this deck is going to struggle with. Like your commander does the thing and will be good if it stays in the battlefield. If it gets removed, you will just you will be dead crying. in the water. 23rd best deck from this year is Painbow and it is helmed by Jared Carthalian. Yikes, I am not a fan of this deck. This one felt really all over the place. Original price, $50. You can get it for $45 right now. And the cards in the deck are worth about, well, $50. Yeah, reprints. This is like all the multicolored decks. So we got Baleful Strix, we got Fabro Elder, Kodama's Reach, Cultivate, Path to Exile, Beast Within, and Cascading Cataracts. That's that's pretty weak overall for, for reprints. I'm not super stoked about any of that stuff. New cards... Iridian Maelstrom is kind of just like an end hostilities type thing. Two-headed Hellkite is cool. Primeval Spawn is awesome. Synergy for the deck? You tell me. It wants multicolored creatures, and I have no clue what it's supposed to do after that. Yeah, exactly. This thing calls, it's like, I'm going to put multi -creature, multicolored creatures on the battlefield and make them a little bit bigger. It's like, question, and then it's like question mark, and then it's profit. How am I ever supposed to win with this deck? This deck was, this, this one felt like the most all over the place deck. It's like, play multi colored and it's just like that's it that's it and then it doesn't even remotely pay you off besides with some plus one plus one counters once in a while how are you supposed to win 
we, we looked at this deck and we're like, how, how, how are you supposed to win? You like attack with a flying creature. That's, oh boy, not very productive. Duds, Saltai Charm, Arkelos. That's just only playable in this deck because every land is basically entering tapped. Okagachi, what a poopy dud that card is. And then there's kind of a lot more that we're not going to really touch on. We're, we're going to save you some time. If we wanted to sit here, we could list probably like 10 to 15. There's really some bad cards in this deck. That's why it's so low here. It's not not overall a good deck. Uh, this mana base was okay, other than the fact that they all enter tap. It has 11 basics, 28 fixtures, which is what I would expect out of a five-color deck, but they all enter tapped. Yeah, vir virtually all of them are going to be tap lands. 17 ramp cards, okay, we're going to need it. 17 removal cards, although six of them are board wipes. <laughs> a lot of board wipes and half of those are bad so removal 17 ish and card draw 10 i would hope for a little more it card draw at least the numbers it, are okay at least it does the basics pretty well numbers wise it just can't win the game yeah this deck Ugh. in 22nd place we have chaos incarnate with carter doom scourge this was like the starter deck for the red black the archetype and it was not great. It started at 25 bucks, which is a really huge bonus for this cycle of precons. They were really cheap to get into. You could buy it for $25 today, actually. Yeah, which is awesome. And this card actually or this deck actually has great value in it. $40 in cards, which is good for a $25 deck. It's awesome to see. For reprints, we have Archfiend the Depravity. Uh, Ran randomly costs money? Randomly, yeah. That card has always cost money for a while. Blasphemous Act, Chaos Warp, Lightning Greaves. Really nice reprint for a $25 deck. That's like a $7 card by itself. Yeah, our standards are a lot lower when you're only making me pay $25. Yes. So this is like... This is the best set of reprints we've seen so far. New cards for all of these starter decks, there are none, which is fine. There's just not going to be any new things. You're only paying 25 bucks. Synergy, this is like a group slug deck, but like kind of a group hug deck. There's a really just a lot of duds in it. And I think if you're not making Carter blow out your opponents, I don't know what you're doing with this. Cherries, you want to list out these duds? Yeah, let's, let's, yeah, pull up the, pull, pull up the screen so we can do them all right now. Stormfist Crusader, Vampire. Nighthawk. Boo. Boo. Indulgent Tormentor. Scythe Spectre. Reign of the Pit. Explosion of Riches. Breath of Malfagor. That card is so bad. <laughs> and Spiteful Visions. And these are all cards that virtually do nothing or will help you die because if you're kind of... If your deck's kind of all over the place and you're wishy-washy and you don't know what you're, you're really doing and you're making everybody draw cards, you're just going to get demolished. And I also want to say, our for duds... Our, like, uh... Standards were low. Yes, our standards change completely when you go to a $25 deck again. Because, again, you're paying half the price. I can deal with a little more duds of cards. I'm not going to deal with Vampire and Erdog. That's ass. These are blank magic cards. We need real magic cards. Uh, as far as the mana base goes, 29 basics. I'm not going to really hate on them too much. 10 fixers, okay. One utility land. Stencil Blood Hall. <laughs> we'll, we'll take it, I guess. is better than the 30th basic. 11 ramp, 15 removal, and 12 card draw. Solid numbers. But oh, did you hear? Did you see those duds that we read out? Yeah, this this deck just suffers from being really, really unfocused. Like, that is the problem with Chaos Incarnate. It's literally a Chaos deck with card at the helm, and Chaos is just not a good archetype in Commander. This, like, Chaos cannot really, even in its best versions, get over, like, a 5 for power because... It's a bad archetype. All right, the 21st best free count of the year. Upgrades Unleashed, helmed by Tajiro, the Shattered Blade. Price $50 for the year. You can get this one for 30. Yeah, it tells you how big of a stinker it is. The value of the cards are around $49. This deck suffers a lot from being so unfocused. Like, I'm going to skip right to like what this deck is missing because this deck want is counters, it is auras, and it is equipment uh it's all three which is not great because exactly. what if you draw what if you draw your equipment payoffs and your aura enablers what if you like the only thing holding it together is shishiro because they all count as modified but like none of these cards want to be in the same deck we got bear umbra as a reprint rhythm of the wilds and decimate pretty bad overall rampant rejuvenator is the only noteworthy new card in this deck and uh, you want to get to the duds? That's what, what's really sad about Rampant Rejuvenator. Rampant Rejuvenator is awesome, but you, like you said, it's literally the only... It stands alone. Yeah, uh, it, but uh, I want to mention one thing for reprint. Bear Umbra, very good reprint, mm -hmm. was very high in price, and Solid. it's great. Duds, there are some really, really bad cards. Walking Skyscraper is useless. Even if you get it down to a 0 mana 8-8, eight, eight, why are we playing this card in our deck? That's awful. Orochi, Merge Keeper, stop... Okay. Wizards, listen. Ooh, here we go. Stop putting in... 
man, two mana mana dork that sort of goes with the deck but still isn't good. Same thing with Leaf Kin Druid. That card is not good. Stop pretending like because it has a little synergy. Just give me, take it out, put in Elvish Mystic every single time. <laughs> Just give us the one mana dorks. Torian Mauler. We got Ascendant Acolyte. Oh, we got Spear Breaker Behemoth. Remember that one? <laughs> oh, uh, we got Mage Slayer, I think from the same set or the set after. And then Smoke Spirits Aid. One of the worst new cards I've ever seen in a precon just leads to a kind of a mess. So we've we've played with this one a lot and it's just you're like really what am I supposed to do? These are some of the dumbest cards. Like Spear Breaker Behemoth is awful awful awful. Mage Slayer is awful awful. Like these are not redeemable cards in any way. Like at least two mana mana work is a little redeemable, right? It's a, a playable card. It's a playable like redeemable card, but it's still bad. What are we talking about? Mage Slayer is not a touchable card. Do not put that in your commander deck. It, it's apparently how you're supposed to win. We got 26 basics, nine duels. Two of them are Moss Fire Valley. Yeah, wow. <laughs> two yeah, utility don't, don't lands. Don't forget about that. Yeah, two utility lands, 37 total, and 11 ramp, seven removal, and eight card draw, although there are questionable card draw cards like Kosei. Yes, like how how reliable do you think you can get Kosei and equipment and or in a counter? I'm going to say very unreliable. All day, baby. Moving on up to 20th place, we got Maestro's Massacre. These pre-guns still have a little bit of issues. We're still in the rocky territory. This one is on Hello, the Painter in the Command Zone, and it's 50 bucks when it started, but you can buy it now for $31. With Synergy in this deck, the problem, the big problem, is that we do not have enough tutus to redeem reliably casualty with on Hello every turn like we actually want to. There's only like 16 valid casualty two options. And I think some people would even disagree on that number of valid cards. Like, yeah, you can sacrifice your creature that you want the static ability on, but I don't think you will. Yeah, exactly. That that's this deck is way off the mark with that. We when we built a deck like this and we did upgrades and we did stuff like that, we were very high on getting into this deck token making instants and sorceries. That is what this deck wants because you want to be able to like sacrifice one of your creatures and get two or three or four or five more creatures. That's what this deck needs and it just absolutely 100% does not happen. It really fails at the actual casualty side of it, which is the only text on, on Hello, so you really have to get that right. We got Lightning Greaves, we got Cascade Bluffs, and we got Ponder as reprints. All of the new Kupana decks got one of the Cascade Bluff type lands, the filter land, so that's nice to see. For new cards, Dogged Detective, I know I, I literally dogged on this card so hard when it came out because I thought it was so butts, but honestly, it's one of, it's a good card. I don't know why. It, it just looks, playable. It looks so bad, and it's so playable, and Body Count is the only other card, and that card's just one up. That's a big step down. We had to mention it. Let's go to Duds. Rain of the Pit. It's back. It's such a medium card. It's but, just it's, Here it is again. Yeah, a little chat. That card's awful. It's, uh, we're trying a casualty too. We don't need to copy this again. We what? don't need three little chats. Why do we need a little chat? This is such a bad card. Waste management. Okay. This is one of my least favorite cards from the whole year. Ooh. Like print wise. It is four mana exile two cards from your graveyard or get a whole graveyard and get some two twos for seven mana. <laughs> Get Come on. out of here with this card. And then Smuggler's Buggy is not doing anybody any favors. How about the mana base? The, the mana base, uh, 18 basics, 18 fixers. That's nice to see. And one utility land. So we're not getting much utility out of this, but our mana is going to be pretty good. 18 basics is really high for a three-color deck, but we can deal with it. Looking at 10 ramp, 12 removal, 10 card draw. And, and, and Anhalo is not going to be able to copy almost any of them because we don't have enough creatures. Yeah, at least those are solid numbers. Like we said, the problem with this deck is just the lack of those uh, sacrificable creatures like we mentioned. How, how awkward when you do all the setup and you just can't do anything with your commander still. You're stuck, you're stuck going. Womp, womp. On to the 19th ranked deck from this year, Mind Flayers. And it's helmed by Captain, I never know how to say this. Ingethrod. Ingethrod, sure, close enough. The original price, $50. At, you can get it now for $55. This horrors deck was very beloved, and the value is about $55 a card in the deck. The main issue with this deck is that horrors are pretty bad. So what you end up with is this weird deck that struggles to play good creatures because most of your creatures are very bad and there's only seven other ways to mill so you're really reliant on specifically your commander to mill and then get cards back your commander makes the mill great and it makes your horrors playable without your commander you are just playing bad horrors 
and we almost have no ways to mill, but even then, a lot of the cards don't care about milling, so then you maybe have seven dead cards that you don't care are milling people. It's really weird. You need the captain for the whole, for the whole game. Yeah, um, for reprints from this set, Holberg of Horror was a great one. The card just came out last, uh, yeah, literally last year, and getting a reprint already was great for the card because it is a very good commander card. Good to see it keeping down in price. Curtain's Call, great removal spell. That's brought it down. Thought Vessel, we like seeing that all the time. Herald's Horn, Lightning Greaves. Keep printing Lightning Greaves and Precons. It's still like a $7 card. Yeah. We will take it all day. And Leyline of Anticipation, which is you know pretty beloved card. New cards from this Precon, Psionic Ritual, Abeleth Spawn and Braid Stealer Dragon. Those are the best ones. So obviously the bar was pretty low when I was listing those. Yeah, it's, they, they were not good reprints. And I remember this deck specifically being like, good new cards. It's like here's some new horrors, but it's like yikes! I don't Do know. I have to? Can I just have Holebreaker Horror? Yeah, give me give me two Holebreaker Horrors by accident. Yeah, give me two of them in the same deck. Mana Mace, twenty basics, twelve fixers, six utility. We got nine ramp, fourteen removal, and the card draw, embarrassing four. Four? I mean, when you have Captain out, you're milling and you're wheeling a deal and you're feeling great. And I guess apparently, if not, you're playing a three mana two two and hoping you draw land next turn. Yeah, I will say that I that's something I've noticed with some precounts. When the commander has card draw or card advantage on it, they really, really cut down on the card draw almost to a point of like What the heck? What are you doing? Um, but you know where we actually looked up all these deck lists? Moxfield.com. Oh. Every single one of these deck lists, there is a Wizards of the Coast page. You click on it, and it has every pre-con you've ever wanted to see from Wizards. Go back. Are you wondering what dual deck uh, elves versus goblins? What did the goblin deck look like? Well, if you were wondering, it's on Moxfield.com for some unexplicable reason. Harry, you mad person. Thank you. Why what are you what is counterpunch? Uh let me see what that card's what that deck's playing. Uh, let me go on Moxwood right now. Oh, and I can now sort it by price and see what if I want to buy the deck on uh, TCG player or Card Kingdom. Wow, super convenient. Thanks guys. This uh notably is not Wizards of the Coast's profile on Moxfield. It's Moxfield uploading decks from Wizards in their original condition. Yeah, and if you're I know you're thinking, uh, what does the Elspeth Planeswalker deck look like? It's on there. Wow, well, how about that? It's literally on there. And while you're looking at it, you can look what that Elspeth does because I bet you can't tell me one thing. Can you tell me what Elspeth's new Boti does? It's in the deck. Go look on Moxfield and tell me what it does because I don't know. Get back to us. Rank number 18, we got Riveteers Rampage, Henzi Toolbox Tour, beloved to Joe Cherry's heart, not leading a very strong deck. He's a amazing commander, kind of hitched to a very mediocre deck. This was obviously $50 upon release. 36 today, and the cards in it are worth $49 about today. And the absolute biggest issue with this deck when I was going over it is there are only 27 total creatures to blitz in this whole entire deck. This deck, I think it had like 29 creatures overall. This Henzi wants you to play creatures galore. Nonstop. It wants you to have 40 plus things to blitz. I have built this deck. I have... I literally have a, one of our my fans on Discord talks to me all the time. I love talking with him about it. We talk about Hendy back and forth. He has a Hendy deck, and it's like both of our decks are 40-plus creatures because you just want creatures. That's all you want to be doing in Hendy, and this deck does not do that. Does not deliver. New cards. Jolene is a really good commander. I'm happy that card exists. Protection Racket. It's here if you need it. We're not really going to play it. Yeah, and for reprints, Avengers on the car, always nice to see a good, nice... Mid, mid to low power commander card. Twilight Mire, like I said, all these got that. Grook's Uprising was starting to get up in price. Nice to see it just get reprinted right away. Though, what are we doing? We have 27 creatures in the deck. Why is Grook's Uprising in here? And Blasphemous Act, this is another one that just cannot get below a dollar. It has, It is in every other precon, and it cannot get below a dollar. Yeah, we need a whole other year of Blasphemous Act and Lightning Grave reprints, apparently. How about the duds? This one had some hilarious duds. Grime Gorgio is a, one of, and Mezio, um, Mezio Mugger are two cards that were from this precon that are terrible. And I'm not going to mention this again going forward. All the confluences sucked. I hate the, it. The three color gilded, uh, you know, like the Cabaretti and the Maestros, whatever those are called, the, the mob houses, those all stunk. They were terrible. And actually, now that I'm on this, I just realized of these duds, there are six. Five of them are from this precon. Brand new. That's how bad they are. It's. We'll go Grime Gorger, Mezio Mugger, Riveteer Confluence, Next of Kin, and Turf War. All 
absolute butts cars. And Aether Snap was the other one, almost non-functional. Uh, I couldn't even begin to tell you, honestly, what Grime Gorger or Metzio Mugger do, so I'm just going to believe cherries. Uh, you know what, Met- uh, I don't even want to know. Uh, don't tell me. I don't care. Yeah, Metzio, they're both, they're both, uh, Metzio, well, no, Metzio is hilarious because it's Atali, but you have to pay for the cards. Ew. Uh, 15 <laughs> basics, 18 fixers, 5 utility lands, and one Temple of the False God to trap you into keeping bad hands. We also have 14 ramp spells. Mana rocks are in this deck. Uh, they don't need to be. Removal, 15. Nice, nice. Card draw, 9. And you also have Hensy to draw a million cards forever. Yeah, exactly. This deck, it could have been so good. It's just, it's not built right. It's not built right at all. It has way too many enchantments. It has way too many artifacts. It has way too many just non-creature Mana spells. Rocks. Mana rocks. Why does it have any mana rocks? Everyone knows mana rocks should be a mana dork. Or like Rampant Rejuvenator. Get that card in this deck. We just we just had it. Anyway, this is a good deck. You can steamroll people if you draw the right quarter of it. This is the best. This is, this is one of my favorite commanders from the whole year, and it sucks that the precon built around him Pretty meh. is awful. And I might have been a little aggressive with my use of awful, but this one's number 17th, and I think that, honestly, there's a gap here. I think that Henzi cuts off the, like, what I would say are bad decks, and buckle up at 17 starts the at least improvement. Or medium. Decent. Low low to medium. Exactly. Like, the rest, of, like, those were, like, I would say the ones I would never get. These are ones that, if you like the archetype, you could probably get. So, commander for this deck, Katori, Pilot Prodigy, but never play that. Put in the other one. Shorakai. Shorakai, which is way, way better. Price of this deck, $50. You can get it for $40 right now. Total value of cards in the deck is 67 though, which is great value. This is one that if you want value from a precon, you can make $27 in cards from buying it online right now for $40, which is awesome. Part of that is Sky Sovereign's price going up. Yes, Sky Sovereign is a played card in currently... Pioneer? Pioneer, yes, exactly. Um, This deck, what it really lacks is good vehicles. It has all the pieces to work and do what it wants to do, but vehicles are bad. So we end up in this weird spot where it's like, Sure, I have a game plan. I can do the game plan. But even when you execute your game plan perfectly, where are you? You're stuck with a bunch of bad vehicles in play that don't do much. Yeah, and I really think you're going to suffer infinite infinite suffering if you leave Katori as the commander. I think that card was really bad. And then Shorkai is like one of the best commanders printed. Maybe the best commander out of all these precons. So just please switch it. You're going you're gonna to thank me later. This deck has more reprints besides Sky Sovereign. We got Emery and Ethereum Sculptor. Huh? How about that? Ethereum Souls was over a dollar. I was shocked to see that. Like it keeps seeing reprints, but it's over I sure would love reprints that are over three dollars. Yeah, yeah, this these were not good reprints. Like literally the only like I think Emery is two or three and Sky Sovereign is the only card like actually at a decent price. It's kinda interesting because overall this deck has value, but like it's not in the reprints. Spread out. It's a lot in the new cards, which are some beloved cards. Kappa Cannoneer, mm-hmm. awesome artifacts card for combat metas. Drum Bowler, really, really good for uh, decks that want to untap all their creatures. Yeah, Research Thief. It's going to be drawing you a bunch of cards oh, in good. specific decks. And Organic Extinction, kind of a go-to artifact creature card. I want to say uh, about a Organic Extinction, I put it on here to mention it. I think this card is very overrated. I Ooh. tried it, and I'm not a fan. I think I'm actually going to cut it from my artifact list. Ooh, but it's here. It's one of the better new cards. The duds of the deck. we got to get there. Jace, Architect of Thought. Stop it. Clearly, there's no reason for this to be in the deck. Like, <laughs> not even... not You can't even tell me one. I don't believe you. You're wrong. There's nothing here. Okay. But there is a reason for this next card. Aeronaut Admiral. But it, it gets a 3-1. You tried. <laughs> it gives your vehicles flying. Get out of here. You're it's re- so bad. You really tried. I hate Indomitable Archangel. Armed and armored. No thanks. Colossal Plow. <laughs> Are, this isn't Call Time Limited and Raiders Carve. Still, this is not Call Time Limited. These cards, this is some of the roughest duds. Like, these are some of the absolute duddiest duds I've ever seen. Armed and Armored is horrendously bad. That card would have to say draw a card on it, and then maybe I would consider putting it in my deck. And then those vehicles that we listed, yikes. I think if you want to upgrade this deck, you're really happy about the Warhammer precons that are higher on this list because they're all better, but you got a bunch of cool vehicles from that. Yeah, uh, the mana base for this, 30 basics, why? Whew. And 7 fixers, why are, this is confusing to me, why is this one so bad? I don't know. We got 11 ramp, 10 removal, and 6 card draw. There's some graveyard recursion, so you're going to get more card advantage, but as far as card draw goes... You're screwed unless you do what we said and switch Shorakai for Katori. Yes, that would make this deck so. Then you're much. just you're just going crazy. Ugh. 
In spot number 16, it's Bedecked Brokers. We got Perry the Pulverizer at the helm. He is totally okay. Price of the deck, 50, obviously, but 25 today. What does that tell you? $38 of cards today, so you're really not getting value. You're here for the experience. So this deck is extremely focused on its game plan of putting a ton of counters all over the place. The one thing that is tough about this deck that is keeping it down from being higher on this list is there's a lot of poopy cards in this deck medium cards like let's just go right to the duds like Avon Courier what is this card this is a 1-1 flyer for two mana that sometimes gets counters even Mimeomancer what is no also horrible Park Heights Maverick isn't even close to a playable magic card and okay this is my favorite one I'm gonna skip a little bit because a Johnny is known for working with counters right so I, I think awesome we're ready every single Johnny card works with plus one plus one counters they put in the one a Johnny card, a Johnny unyielding, who isn't putting counters on putting creatures. counters on creatures. Why would you do that? That is so beyond confusing. To that me. that's a that's a tilter. Uh, Shield broker and broker's confluence are the other duds. Uh, as far as so reprints, on. Shield broker is one of my another one of my least favorite cards from this year. Mm -hmm. It is. It doesn't. Why does it not let you take commanders? Why does this card say non-commander creature? It is the most is mind-boggling. Salt. Reprints. Karn's Bastion is a nice one. Flooded Grove. We like these uh, filter lands from these decks. Generous Gift. And Slippery Bogbinder is a good one. I want to mention that I am really happy with when we get something like a Flooded Grove reprint in a pre-con. We don't get pre those. Pre-con reprints of cards like this drive down price so much. I want Look at Cascade Bluffs. Uh, before it was reprinted and when it was reprinted, it's like I think I saw a ten, fifteen dollar difference. That's a lot. Let's keep getting throw. Let's just with Shocklands one year. How Ooh. cool would that be? We already put them in Infinity. We're not we're not saving them for Ravnica anymore. Yeah, exactly. So let's let's get them out there for the new cards. I am a huge fan of Damning Verdict. That is a good board. The decks that are plus one plus one counters decks. This is a go to board wipe. Period. It's good. And Resourceful Defense is the we is the weird. Uh, what is it called? Ozolith thing where you can move the counters around. You can move them to lands, right? Yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> Mana base, 15 basics, 17 fixers, 6 utility, 38 total. Ramp, 12. Too many rocks for a green deck. Again, removal, 9. And it's kind of weird and narrow. So, it was peculiar how weirdly narrow it is. Bant is really good at like, removing, removing things. things. And it, we had some weird narrow stuff here. Card drop, 8. Kind of. Perry's not going to help you out. So, it's a little low. Like, and I think the problem is, I don't think there's many payoffs. I have a bunch of medium cards putting weird counters on creatures, which is totally fine, but I think the payoffs need to be there, and I don't think there's enough. Yeah, the thing, you either win with parry, this is another deck where if the commander's removed, uh -oh. suddenly what are you doing? Because you're only going to be able to win with commander damage, but parry, really, otherwise you're just going to be like, I have a bunch of non-synergistic cards that put weird counters on my Watch stuff. out for my death touch counter. Woohoo! All right, going all the way to number 15 from 16. I know it's a huge jump up. Big jump. We have Legends Legacy. The commander of the deck, Dihada Binder of Wills. She's a confused commander. Price of this deck was $50. It's now, you can get it for just $38. Value of the cards is $73, though. Another very good buy if you're looking for value. The one thing I really liked about this deck is it has 28 total creatures and every one is legendary. And well there are 13 other cards in the deck that are also legendary. That's awesome. That's a good count. I would, I mean, I, if I'm building this deck, I'm hiking it up. I'm going to have like 50 legendary permanents. Like 50, but but it's fine because it, it at least it got the idea and it did it. Now, BZ, of the new cards, could you ever guess? The, this is the most expensive card in the deck and what is giving it so much price. Can you guess what it is? Is it Gerard's Hourglass Pendant, the card that was people were hyped up about? Yeah, and the, but that card's really cool. And no, it's not. Mm, it's mm. the Reaver Cleaver. Of course. Uh, Okay, can I explain this card to you? If you have a 6-6 six, six on the battlefield, okay. and you pay 3 for this, mm. then 3 to equip, yep. and then hit, and it's not blocked, mm. you're up 1 mana. This card is so not good. Why do people like Reaver Cleaver? Uh, apparently, turning things into old Gnawbone is the, the new plan. Let's go to the reprints, because there's some good ones. Shizo, Death Storehouse. They just randomly threw this in. And it's like one of the best reprints in a precon we've ever seen. Bantu's Monument was randomly expensive, and we'll take it. Reliquary Tower, again. Dragon Skull Summit, nice land. Knight's Whisper was getting up there. And Okatra's Monument, kind of also getting up there. Those, they're not bad cards. Yeah, exactly. And like all of these reprints that we're seeing here, these cards were, they've all come down in price. So it's like they're reasonable now, but 
again, driving them way down. Shizo was really expensive. It was it, a modern card. It was is such a nice card to see driven down in price. For duds, okay. I know I said that all the creatures are legends, but we don't need carries out. Yeah, this deck's high value cards is definitely helping it out in the rankings because there's a lot of duds. <laughs> Ashling Pilgrim, what are these? These are such bad legends that don't do anything. Heroes Downfall, and now you're insulting me. Now you don't even watch our videos, Wizards. What do, the heck? Do you know what Sword of the Chosen does? Nope. It is a legendary, like, it's not an equipment. If you thought it was equipment, it's not. It's oh, it taps to give something plus two plus two, right? Or something? <laughs> yep. Why? Yeah, Why that's that an interesting choice. What about, oh, yeah, Tenza, Godo's Mall to give maybe Trample and some plus twos. And Read the Bones, I love Read the Bones. It's near and dear to my heart, but I don't play it in my commander decks so if I'm trying to win games. Yeah, exactly. The mana base, 16 basics, 15 fixers, 8 utility. Okay. Ooh, those are good numbers. It's uh, good spread. I think they do pretty good on the, I think the, obviously, I'm we're, we play six basics in our. Yeah. Uh, in our decks, but like I think they're doing they're doing pretty good on the three color mana bases. Uh, ten ramp, seven removal, seven card draw, lacking a bit in removal and card draw. Yeah, I want to touch back on Dihada real quick. This kind of a this commander card like is to me all over the place. I don't know what the, this thing's supposed to do. I don't know what the three abilities have to do with each other. It's not a bad card. You can just minus three and give value out of treasures and stuff. Totally fine. I just don't understand it. Yeah, I think I, I like the I like the way you put it. It's a little confused, but it is decently strong. 14th place, Mishra's Burnish Bander. Yeah, there was Brothers War Precons too. This one is a big bonus because 100% of the cards in it got the old border. So it's nice little nostalgia and cards that have been printed never before in this border. Commander, Mishra, Eminent One. Not a great card. More of a combo card, so it's not going to be great in this deck. Yes, the original price of this deck, $50. You can get it for $40 right now. And the val card value is there. It's $63. Very cool. Um, this deck is super heavy on artifacts, and I like the way it's built, but the issue is that all you're doing is beating with a 4-4 every turn and getting a little bit of value out of whatever that artifact does. Closing's hard. That's going to make this deck really, really bad at closing, but like you said, when you upgrade this deck, it will be good at closing because it's going to combo out a lot. Reprints? Absolutely stellar reprints because we got Expressive Iteration now. Wow. Expressive Iteration, already a very good card to reprint. It's great in modern. It's actually, did I say it's great in modern? It's great across, it's like universally good in every format it is in. It yep. is an amazing magic card. And now it has an old border printing that it didn't have before. Mm -hmm. What a huge upgrade that is. Like mm -hmm. taking, not only did we get a reprint of a great card, we got an old border one. Like an alternate style. Yes. With a form engine, we're starting to get up in price. This reprint drove it right down. It's, it's a cool card. It's splashy. It's fun. Reliquary Tower in Old Border, I think, for the first time ever. And all three artifact lands. With new art. With new art. So cool that they get new art as well. Yeah, it's super great. I, I like this precon a lot. New cards. We got Blast Furnace, Hellkite. That's going to beat the crap it's out of people. such a cool card. Scavenge Brawler is not necessarily great in this deck, but it's pretty sweet overall. And Terraciers, I got their Devastation. I like this card. It's been really cool. Yeah, exactly. I, I think that... Um, like, I'm not a big fan of that, the one that uses this list, it's fine, but like, Blast Furnace Hellkite is so cool, and Scavenge Brawler is an overperformer for me so far, like, when okay. I've used it, it, it just makes anything into such a big, giant threat, such a cool card. What about Duds? And for Duds, uh, I think this deck was overall fairly focused and didn't really go too duddy, but I don't like Mirrorworks at all. I know it's, some people are a big fan of it. BZ's played it, and I've literally watched BZ copy nothing, ever. Like, with a deck that has, like, 50 artifacts in it, I, this card is did not perform well for us. It's not it. No. We got 13 basics. We got 18 fixers. We got 6 utility. 37 lands total. 13 ramp. Cool. 7 removal. Ooh. 9 card draw. Eh. Okay. Yeah, we're almost there. Uh, they're a little, it's a little low on doing the basics overall, but still pretty good. Uh, honestly, you can go even more ramp in a deck like this because you can play, your your deck is willing to play lots of extra artifacts. So. Yeah, get the foundry inspectors in there. Yeah, very, you know, those things are so good. All right, let's move on. To the last one in the bottom half, the 13th deck, Draconic Destruction. Led by Atarka World Runner. This is one of the $25 decks. Pretty awesome. You can currently you can actually put it right now for $28. And the total card value? Almost 40. Pretty awesome numbers overall. This deck is a dragon's deck, but where it lacks is it only has 21 dragons. Couple of ways to make dragon tokens, but some of them are really, really bad. We're gonna Get to it in the duds in a second. Mm -hmm. Another thing with this deck is that Atarka is just going to beat the snot out of people. It's going to kill them really, really, really fast. That's kind of maybe one of your main win conditions. Yeah, that's completely fair. All right, so for reprints, we have 
Vandalblast, super nice for a $25 deck. Dragon Tempest, just a great card, especially, again, in a $25 deck. Thundermile Hellkite, which isn't that great of a card, but was worth money. I don't know why. And Elemental Bond, which is a card that sees a lot more play than it probably should. But. Yeah, new cards, none. It's not a thing that was happening here. Mm -hmm. Duds, time for duds. Atarka's Monument, hate it. Provoke Shh, the Trolls. Easy. It is Atarka Monument. Atarka Monument, hate it. Provoke <laughs> the Trolls. Terrible card. Happens to turn Atarka into a one-hit kill, which may, leads, leads to me questioning why the learn-to-play magic $25 commander decks first dip into the format has one-hit kills in it. Just get this card. It's not good. Just it's get it out of here. It's so funny because you, you get to – it's like, yeah, we're going to teach you how to play. What does a tap land do? <laughs> the term you're going to learn today Go fits learn today, so yeah. perfectly. It's like you literally just like get one-shotted by an Atarka out of nowhere. Like turn seven – Dead. And everyone else continues playing. That's Commander, baby. Yeah, welcome to Commander. <laughs> Furnace Whelp, as in Whelp, I guess we have to cut this. Dragonkin Berserker, not going <laughs> to boast about this card. And then Sarkon the Dragon Speaker, he needs to speak to some better dragons. Yeah, that card's so bad. Uh, mana Base, 30 basics. I don't expect too much out of these, seeing as they are $25 decks. I'm okay with this. Nine fixers, one utility land, 40 total lands Oof. in the deck. A little high, but it's pretty okay. high. It's okay. Uh, for Ramp, we have 14. Awesome. But we need it. We, we're, we're a dragon stack. 14 removal. Awesome. It's like the highest one we've seen. Seven card draw. We're suffering. And I know that we're playing big, splashy things, so we're going to have things in hand often, but seven's a little low. Let's 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 get those numbers up. Yeah, because we got to worry about board wipes as dragons. We're, we're going to be number one target. Atarka is not going to stay on the battlefield all the time. Ugh, if, if Dragon Tempest stays on the battlefield, you'll win a lot of games. Twelfth is First Flight, another one of the starter commander decks from 2022. The commander is Asperia Supreme Judge. And I have no clue why, because the deck is a Flyers Matter deck. It's just, it, 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 Esperia is just there. She does absolutely nothing. She synergizes with three cards in the deck, and then everything else is like, yeah, just play Flyers. Did you even read Esperia? It has flying, BZ. It has flying. Yeah. They nailed it. Uh, original price, $25. You can get it for 23 right now. And the card's worth $32. Awesome to see. Uh, awesome reprints in this deck. Swords of Plowshare, Counterspell, Generous Gift. Lots of good removal. Talisman of Progress. Big one. Hey, we're driving that card down in price. That was the one that everyone was like, where is this card? That was like the last Talisman we needed. Yeah. Thought Vessel's another solid one. And Safara Sky's Blade was getting up there a little bit in price. No new cards. The, the duds, though. Pilgrim's Eye. I can't support that. Aetherize. Why? Why is this in every pre-con? I hate this card everywhere. And Vow of Duty. No. It's just it's like a limited card. I vows are really really bad. They're, they're good in limited commander. They're really bad outside of that. Thirty basic lands, eight fixers, one utility lands. Ramp eleven, awesome. Removal fourteen, pretty good. Card draw ten. In a commander draw some cards. So the numbers are at there. The numbers are there for the basics. Yeah, and I think the deck's gonna function pretty well. The flyers have natural evasion. You're gonna be able to get through damage. It's got a nice focused game plan for the most part, except for like Gideon Jura, who's like. Ooh, Spiria, but you're going to get a lot of wins just because all your creatures fly. And you can just tell we like these decks because they're up high. They're up high. 13, 13, 12, and you, there's still two more to come. These decks are actually really nice and awesome, especially for their $25 price tag. All right, on to the 11th deck, and this one is the first of the Warhammer decks, which are all awesome. So you know we're in, we're in good territory they now. They made it high. Yeah, these, this is definite good territory. This is Tyranid Swarm. Led by the Swarm of Lord himself. Why not? Why would it not be led by him? Uh, this deck has a lot of X-Spells. And I mean a lot. But the main issue is Swarm Lord doesn't care about X-Spells. We want to switch out commanders. This deck is desperately looking to play Magnus Luca Kane. Such a weird name. Magus Lucia Kane. Whatever. I said that. For those listening at home, <laughs> there's a lot of plus one, plus one counters cards. Yeah, you got to switch out those commanders. Or else it's just you're just going to be like, why does my deck have... 85 Ravenous cards, and Swarm Lord barely cares about it. I think also we'll get to why you really, really need not the Swarm Lord and one of the big problems with this deck. But we got to get to the prices. The original price, $60. That's about what all these Warhammer decks were going for. You can buy it today for $59, hashtag saving money. And the card's value today is $79, bucks, so you're going to make some profit. That's, that's pretty cool. I mean, not literally. You're not going to swap. You're not going to flip this for profit. You're just going to have more value in cards than when you bought the sealed than product. Than what you bought, yeah. The, it, the, exactly. You'll spend $60 and get $80 worth of cards. That's cool. Reprints, Hardened Scales, awesome new art too. Super cool to see. Farseek, again, I guess. Motorcycle Farseek. Motorcycle Farseek, Herald's Horn, 
also I think has a motorcycle on it. I'm not sure. But what's so great about these is you were going to say. As I was going to say is everything in this set is Warhammer themed. With new art and new borders. New art, new borders, and the deck all looks amazing. So the, one of the main reasons these are all up so high is this: these decks hit home runs in a lot of categories. This one lacks in a few little things where it's just not that great of a deck overall. But it hits a home run in design, mm -hmm. in the way it looks, in just like our and border. It's everything about this. And thematically, these decks are amazingly fit into the Warhammer 40k universe while still feeling very magic. I mean, we want to talk about, you want to talk about new cards? There's like 50 new cards in these decks. Yes, which is amazing. And there's a lot of, there's bad ones, but there's also a lot of cool good ones like Shadow and the Warp. That card's worth money and it's been performing pretty well as a strong card. It's like 15 bucks and Gears and Starn is like 10 bucks. Yeah, exactly. Like these decks all have this. Sporosis is awesome. Uh, you got the new commander. Uh, what is it? BZ? Uh, it's Luc Magus Lucia Kane. A uh, Magus Luca Kane. Nope. You got Bi Biophagus <laughs> and Nexus also to save us some time there. And how about the deads? Uh, the Etherize. Why get, is this here? Get out of my nightmares, Etherize, please. <laughs> the Red Terror is one of. I know there's some bad cards, and it's like we didn't list every like. You know they're allowed to put some medium cards, especially when they're printing a bunch of new cards. The Red Terror is one of the worst cards I've ever seen. It is one of the worst new pre-gun cards of the year. It's so bad. Lictor, Venom Thwarp, and Breed for the Hunt, or Bread for the Hunt. Yeah, you're, they're hungry, so you need to feed them some bread. 22 basics are in this deck and 17 fixers. That's better than a lot of the other ones, too. I mean, we're paying 60 bucks, so our mana base is a little bit better. 16 ramp. God, do we need ramp. Thank you for putting 16 in there, and if with... Magus Lucia Kane, you're getting even more. Removal is nine, and oh boy, time to find out the deck's weakness. Card draw, three, baby. I think, yeah, the two big things about this deck that throw it off is, one, card draw, and that's way too low. And two, wrong commander in the front of this deck. The Swarm Lord is just not good enough to lead this deck. You need to switch that. It seems like they wanted to, you to say, oh, you know, every time you Ravenous a card, it replaces itself, which is not card draw, it's just a cantrip. But now you're, you have to pay like seven mana to replace your cards. So when you play things early, you just like don't get anything out of it. You're just going to run out of steam so fast. And everyone who I've talked to has played with or against this deck said it's like the worst one. And Magus Lucia Kane also turns your Ravenous cards in from cantrips to card draw. Yes, which you desperately need. Into the top ten, baby. Number ten is Cabaretti Cacophony. Kit Canto Mayhem Divas leading us off. The Synergies. This is a Tokens deck first and foremost with a little bit of gold sprinkled in and wizards does a good job at making tokens decks i will say that they're really good at making sure decks can go wide make lots of tokens overrun with them and use them in other ways which is awesome kikanto is a cool commander in that sense price of this deck 50 dollars but you can get it right now for only 32 dollars that's pretty low Price of the cards in the deck are still 50 dollars though so if you buy it for 32 right now you'll be getting an 18 dollar value 18 Oh, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, I was like, what? Scoot Swarm is a reprint, and we'll love it because it's a cherished landfall card. Beastmaster Ascension, it's an overrun variant. I'm happy it's out there, but we're not going to play it too often. Path to Exile, sure, give me all the ones. I, I don't care. I'll take a 1,000 Path to Exiles. And Rugged Prairie, talked about those filter lands. Yeah, very happy about those. New cards, we have Master of Ceremonies. I'm really, I'm a big fan of this It's card. not bad. It's, I figured out why I like this card so much for the, uh, you know, how we talk about how giving group card draw isn't very good. Uh -huh. One of the things I really like about this card is it does on your upkeep, which means that you get to use the card first, which is rare for a card like this. True. You do get to use like the group huggy thing first. We got Rose Room Treasurer, and then Grand Crescendo is like a token staple now. Oh, that card's so good. It's such an amazing magic card. Uh, for the duds, I mentioned this earlier, Leafkin Druid. This is your guy. Just give me a mana dork. This, this one's following you around. Just give me a regular... Manado, the worst card in a pre-con maybe this year, Sizzling Soloist. What? That card is horrendous. That's a 3-2, right? It's it's a 3-2 that wasn't even good at limited. Yeah, it's it's not a new card, but it is one of the worst ones in a pre-con in general. Yes, that's what I meant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Fell the Mighty, we hate this. This is not a board wipe. This is a asking to be blown out and have a bad time. Sandworm Convergence, I'm never playing this card. I don't know what. It's not it's a token. Like it's not a win condition. It's not a tokens card. I don't know what it is. It's nothing. 16 basics in the deck, 18 fixtures, 4 utility lands, 2 thumbs up for that. Doing the basics, we got 12 ramp, 9 removal, 9 card draw, 
pretty close to what we want. I mean, I no complaints. I like what one more removal, one more card draw, and I'm good. On to the ninth best deck from this year, Forces of the Imperium. This deck was a little confused, and we didn't like it a ton, but it's got a lot going for it still. The leader of this deck, Inquisitor Greyfax. Now, this is one of the most, this is why this card is confusing. Get ready to not play this card if you buy this deck. Yeah, because you're not going to want to play it at all. The original price for the deck, $60. You can currently buy it for $68. And the card's value in the deck, 103 Two thumbs up. Probably, I think this is the most value you can get out of one of these decks. This is pretty impressive. I'm happy. It's part of the reason it's up so high. Yeah, it really helps it a lot. Um, this deck is one of the, is the most confused, uh, like, what it wants to do wise. Like, I will say like, that. Yeah, you kind of want to, like, go wide, but you also, like, are you, are you investigating? Are you got artifact stuff? What's going on? It's very strange. And But this deck isn't bad still. It can do some things. It's just confused. And I know there is a... People yelled at me when we talked about this deck last time that, Joe, how do you not see there's a token strategy? It's like, because it's not obvious. It's, it's not even close to obvious. No. So what we want to do to make it more obvious and good is switch out stupid Greyfax, put her in the 99, and put Marnie's Calgar, who says tokens drawing us cards, make tokens. That's great. I'd love to do that. Yeah. It fits perfectly with what we're trying to do, and it gives the deck an identity. For the reprints, we got Skull Clamp, Soul Ring with New Art. Talisman of Progress. Again. Hey, we're back in Swords of Power Share. Again, all these reprints get huge boosts because we have unique art. Skull Clamp has been printed, what, 10, 15 times? Still, uh, still five bucks. It's still five bucks. And it, there's only one version with this art, and it's from this deck. Mm -hmm. Brand new stuff. Thunderhawk Gunship is a sweet little <laughs> top end vehicle. Reaver Titan is awesome. I love it. Golden Throne, I don't think it's that great in this deck, but in another deck, we're making a ton of mana with it. Triumph of St. Catherine. I so this card is like thirteen dollars. I think it's because it sees play in Legacy, but I couldn't even find like a Legacy deck list. And it's obviously it's it looks like a nothing burger for Commander. I don't know what the deal is with that one. It's a weird card. It's I a, don't get it. It really is a weird card. Uh, Vexilus Praetor, uh, just a very beloved cool card for hyped. This. It, it really yeah. And Celine, the Living Saint, the first of the three Commanders printed this year that does this exact thing. Celestine actually, she changed her name. Yeah. What did I say? I think you said Celine. <laughs> Celine, yeah, Celestine. Celine is a singer. Celestine. Uh, okay. We got to get to the duds. Every deck has duds. Launch the fleet. No thanks. I'll leave the fleet at home. Redemptor Dreadnought is like a, one of those you know bottom tier vehicles. I think uh, Memorial to Glory is bad. Tapland. Fell the Mighty is back. Why? I don't want it to be back. Go away. Get out of here, Fell the Mighty. Yeah, Twenty yeah. basic. Sixteen fixers. One utility land. This thing is absolutely uh, doing it well because we got ramp removal and card draw. 10 ramp, 17 removal, awesome, and 11 card draw. So even though this deck struggles a bit with identity, it makes up for it by being well-built for like interacting, for ramping, for staying in the game. It just needs an identity. Give it that identity, do some upgrades, and this deck will be great. Popping off. Time for another $25 starter deck, and it's not even the last one. This is number eight, Token Triumph. Commander is Amara, Soul of the Accord, which if you showed me the five face commanders, I would have told you right now this is one of the worst ones. But apparently this deck is great. Turns out it has a lot of ways to actually tap Amara without putting her in combat. I I would have thought they would have just said, get her in combat, I don't care. Figure out a way to tap her. But they have a ton of them, and it makes tokens, and it pumps them, because Wizards knows what they're doing. Yes, exactly. This deck really is built correctly. Like, on, like they hit the nail on the head with this build, and it's perfect. For $25, this is what I want to see. $30 in value in the total deck, and you can buy it right now if you want it. For twenty-three dollars, which is sweet. Uh, reprints, we got Slate of Ancestry, which is just a card that's overpriced. I don't even think it's that good. It's just an overpriced card. So it got a nice reprint. Path to Exile is now becoming a. It wasn't like last year a um, precon card, but it's become a precon card, and it's getting down in Eternal Witness. Nice Sh to see. Show me Path to Exile and Budget Bombs, twenty twenty-three. That's what we're gonna look for. No new cards. Stop asking for them. Duds, Jade Mage, three mana for a token. Get out of here, Celestia Guild Mage. Four mana for a token, six mana for a token, or four mana. A Johnny Caller of the Pride. Again, they chose the worst possible a Johnny because we'll take any of the ones that pump our team because we have a bunch of creatures. Why would we want to pump one creature and give it a counter or flying a double strike? I don't know. You know how many Johnnies put a counter on your team? Like, All of them except for like the two that we've been talking exactly. about. Exactly. Stop giving us the wrong a Johnny. We're not a go big deck. A Johnny would only make sense in a go big deck, right? Because the, the Like flying... if your commander was big or had a combat damage trigger. Not one plus one plus one counter. Get out of here and... The removal's a little lacking. It's cool because it has Convoke, Devouring Light, that's eh, and Conclave Tribune, eh, eh. These are just, they're two, 
They're very weak and low on my the scale. Thematic. But I do like that they fit the theme at least for that. Uh, we have 29 basic lands, 9 fixers, and 1 utility lands. 13 ramp, 8 removal, and 6 card draw. I would like some more card draw. That's keeping this deck down because token decks are very uh, susceptible to board wipes. Do you want to know something that I thought was hilariously weird about this deck? So uh, it has the 6 mana draw for each creature you control. Yeah. It also has camaraderie. Uh, collective unconscious. Collective unconscious and camaraderie in this deck. Okay. And then I thought, well, maybe they didn't want to include uh, Schematic Revelation in any of these decks mm -hmm. because it's too expensive or something. It's in one of the other decks. Why is it not here? Can we have... <laughs> mm. Give me it. All right, we're starting to get pretty high here. Seventh ranked deck this year, Urza's Iron Alliance, helmed by Urza, Chief Artificer. Original price of $50. You can buy it right now for $38. And the total value of the deck is $56, which is awesome. This deck has a lot of artifacts. So 42. 42, which is awesome. And... It has Constructs to actually close out the game. This is a pre-con that can put away the game. Constructs are huge. Yeah, I was a little bit down on it uh, maybe for the pre-con level because it's like, okay, a Construct, you still have to attack. It's on the ground. They have no evasion. But it's not really one Construct. You start building up, it's like four or five. That's 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 enough. Yeah, one Construct would be eh. But Mid middle. But and that, getting another Construct that pumps your other Constructs and then another one and another one starts to make it get really big really fast. And with 42 artifacts, your count's always... Always going to be pretty high for reprints. Thought monitor that was that's a card that's going to be a staple of uh, artifact decks artifact decks forever. forever. So it's good to just see it get reprint. Slime Master Thopters, another one very good. Preordain not really that good of a card, but a fine reprint. It's like three fifty. Uh, Skull Clamp, thank you. Keep giving us Skull Clamp. Thought Vessel, this is like its second or third reprint this year. Seriously, we need it. Thought Vessel is really, really good. And Relic of Progenitus is like one of the most expensive cards in this whole deck. It's like six bucks. Uh, we don't even really play that card anymore, but okay. Not much. Uh, new cards, nothing to really speak of, which is probably part of the reason you're not getting a ton of value out of this from, you know, starting at 50 to now being 56, but you can get it for 38. Uh, so we got Wire Surgeons, which is like really specific, and you probably don't want it if you're an artifact deck, but you might. And then Thopter Shop, which is also really specific. That's about it. Yeah, that, that's just not that good. And the, for the duds, we have Hexavis. Come on. Whatever. Another one of the worst pre-con cards that is brand new. And Vidokin Humiliator, I don't know. No which thing. which was a previous contender for one of the worst pre-con cards introduced in like 2015 or whatever. It's pretty bad. Uh, okay, mana base. We have 11 basics, 20 fixers, 5 utility lands. Really awesome. Actually, one thing I forgot to mention with this deck is we also got all the artifact lands with new art again in Old Border. Super yes, cool. Yes, remember this is the other Old Border deck. 10 ramp, 10 removal, 11 card draw. It's like they watched a Command Zone video with this deck. Yes, it's awesome. I mean, those are great, great, great numbers. The thing that really brought this deck all the way up to number 7 is, like BZ mentioned, the all Old Border cards It is a huge buff. It makes it look... Having all your cards be in a unique border that puts the deck together, it also makes it cool to keep the deck together. That's why part of this... Part of these cards that are reprints are more expensive. Like, I don't think Preordain's actually 350, but I think this one is. Yeah, yeah. There's no old border scroll clamp. There's one old border scroll clamp. It's this one. Sixth place goes to Ruinous Powers, commanded by Abaddon the Despoiler. This is the deck that really hopefully takes advantage of Abaddon, but then it's kind of bad at pushing through damage needed to actually make Abaddon so great. Abaddon is one of the best commanders released in these precons, but this deck can't really take advantage of them. But we got other other good things going on. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, the original price is like sixty dollars. You can get it right now for sixty dollars. Great. In today's value in the cards, we have eighty one total dollars, which is awesome. Some good reprints. Chromatic Lantern coming down in price, which is nice because I want to see Chromatic. I want to see Chromatic Lantern as a budget buy because I think it's a great budget card. And not I really otherwise. And not really otherwise. Talisman of Indulgence. Talismans are great. And Blasphemous Act, which can knock it under a dollar. For new cards, we have. Bloodthirster, I love that card. That card is so cool. Pink Horror. Sweet card. Also, th th these three cards that are here, Bloodthirster, Pink Horror, and Blood for the Blood God are three of my favorite cards from, like, the entire, like, 40K uh, pre -cans. Blood all... for the Blood God was the best one by far. It's our favorite, That's too. a like, sick card. Not only is it good, it's cool, and well-designed, and, okay, it has an exclamation point. In, in the name. the name. That is the, so cool. So badass. <laughs> So bad. There's, like, there's actually three exclamation points in uh, kill, maim, burn. burn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, two arms is a white card with an exclamation point. How about the duds? We got Heralds of Zinch, Blood Crusher of Corn, and Dark Apostle. Blood Crusher of Corn, BZ. I believe it's pronounced corn. He crushes corn. 
This deck has nine ways to ramp, pretty good. 17 removal, that's really good. But only four card draw. Now, obviously Abaddon is trying to create card advantage in other ways. Here but, we go again. But that doesn't change the fact that we only have four card draw. If we don't have our commander, we're not going to get card advantage. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's like, oh, you got a commander that draws cards, so we're not going to give you any card draw. We have a little bit of trouble pushing through Abaddon. All we can really do is remove a few creatures and hope that then he gets through a couple damage. But, like, I would I would hope for a little bit more. This, this deck is still sweet overall. It's just... I wish I could hit with Abaddon, but I think Wizards also knew Abaddon's insane, so that it's a little, when you hit with it, you don't want to win the game immediately. Also, one of my problems with it is there just seems to be ways to deal direct damage in this deck because Abaddon doesn't need to hit. Yeah, give me more blood for the blood gods. Exactly. All right, on to the top five. This is the fifth best deck from this year, and it is Grave Danger. Ba -da 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 -da. Uh, and it is led by Gisa and Garof, which notably not a zombie, but we, we'll deal with it. Original price, $25. You can get it right now for $22. And the deck's value is $26. If you didn't know, this is a zombie deck that makes a bunch of zombies. Th it does. And it's, it's good at it. There's it, 36 zombies in here. There is. There's total, 36 total ways to either make zombies or that are zombies, which is pretty good. I would obviously want to boost that number. I love I love my uh, tribal decks being like 40, 50, like get them way up there. But that this is a good number. I will say that. And there's payoffs. And there's payoffs. Uh, for reprints, we have Haven Ghoul Lich, which is a nice little reprint. Uh, Royal Subordinate was starting to get up there. Nice that it just got a well, like, solid reprint and a cheap precon. And Soul Ring, which is, you know, always there. No new cards. Stop asking me. Uh, there's not new cards in these decks. Jeez. The duds, though. We got Liliana's Devotee. Pup Zombies isn't a zombie. Kind of hate it. And Giralf's Mind Crusher. What? Are we suddenly milling? I don't I don't want to do that. Pilford Plans is one of the worst cards. It's like, what? Well, it is really just divination. It really is. Siphon Flash is awful. Murder is even worse than Hero's Downfall, which I was insulted by. And Lazotep Plating Cherries, you like that card, right? Uh, no, I actually hate it. I, actually, I hate the flavor of it because it's a plating that clearly, clearly is indestructible. The whole point of it was that they could walk through the player bridge and not die, and they're really durable. But it doesn't give it the It just has Expert. <laughs> it just has Expert. Uh, uh, for the mana base, 31 basics, 8 fixers, 0 utility lands. Totally fine. We are okay with these cheap mana bases being not the best. Uh, for ramp, 8. Nice. Removal, 11. And 8 card draw. But this deck gets a lot of card advantage from its graveyard, which is awesome. So 8 card draw is okay because we have a lot of recursion. Yeah, somebody at Wizards was sleeping because they gave us a commander that virtually draws cards and a bunch of card draw. Yes, I... Thank you. Thank you for that, Wizards. If you're a professional pre-con uh, devotee at this Kinda point, sore. you know which four are left. But number four, for those who don't know, it's Obscura Operation. Kamiz Obscura Oculus is the commander. And this deck is just trying to push through a ton of damage. We got a lot of combat damage triggers. And there's only a few ways to ensure connection without Kamiz. So we're really hoping to keep Kamiz around. She's really, really, really important to the deck. Um, but when she's out... This deck will hum. It will be strong, and it will push through a lot of damage while getting a lot of combat damage triggers. 50 uh, bucks for the deck. $35 if you want to buy it today. $41 if you open them up and have all the cards from it. That's not too much of an increase, but, you know, it's about even, whatever. Yeah, for the reprints, we got Stranic Resonator. An offer you can't refuse, which was printed you in... You gotta go like this. Uh, and, uh... Swords of Plowshare, keep reprinting it. Make it a budget bomb. We want Swords of Plowshare to be a budget bomb. Yes, one of the big bonuses from this deck was Smuggler's Share, which isn't worth a ton now, but it's a pretty good card, and it was worth a bunch. Lethal Scheme is one of the best cards from these from any precon this year. Life Insurance is awesome, and Aerial Extortionist I play all the time. I want to say that that is one of the biggest... Like, this deck is solid overall. Those four cards heavy hitters. are heavy hitters. This deck really had like a huge jump up in our rankings because of how good those four cards are. Like that's what you want to see. Like if every single precon had four cards like this, I would be happy. It's like that is what I want to see out of right. precon. None of them are broken. They're all just like good cards for specific decks. Daring uh duds. Daring Saboteur is garbage. But I, it's Pajama Man. We call him Pajama Man. He's definitely wanting Otherwise known as Pajama Man, he's definitely wearing a onesie. It's such a weird card. I hate it. It's also a pirate if you like pirates. But I just, it just keeps getting reprinted. Like It's fine if it just gets printed as a rare in Ixalan and then never again, but it, we just keep seeing it. It's an uncommon now. Yeah, then we see it even more. Oh, what is uh, What is next? What is uh, Nightmare Unmaking is next. What is it? That's the one that like 
cares about your hand size and removing creatures, and then either option is good. Oh, yeah, that card sucks. Uh, okay, so uh, mana base. We have 17 basic, 19 fixing, nice, and two utility lands. Okay, solid. 10 ramp, 15 removal, 18 card draw. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. This deck is good. This is just a very, very good deck. Um, I was a little disappointed when I was looking back uh, to double check these decks at how bad a lot of the new Capenna Precon was. Uh, most of them were pretty rough around the edges. This one is not. This is just a great deck in almost every aspect from both uh, reprints to new cards and just overall like a well-built humming deck. I yes. Know, you've, got, humming. you've got a plenty of creatures that get value equal to a card when they hit a player, and Kamis is over here giving them either unblockable or double strikes. You're always doing it. We got like Fallen Shinobi. It's going to kick the crap out of them. There's the one that casts it, the Ninja, Silent Blade Oni, that casts cards from their hand. You can just really, really take people down if they're not ready. All right, number three, the third best deck of this year, Party Time. Can you tell me what the commander's name is? It's on screen, but I'm covering up the name. You don't know it because nobody does. It's Nalia D. Arnis, obviously. Duh. If you didn't know that, you were just a smelly poopy head. What deck is this? This is the party deck. I mean, it's called Party Time Beast. You really have to ask. It has 14 clerics, 6 rogues, 9 warriors, 11 wizards, 5 changelings, which can cover any one of those. And it's smart because it has the least amount of rogues. Our commander's a rogue. Bingo. It's just a really even number all across the board. Original price, 50 bucks. You can buy it today for 50 bucks, but you're getting $83 worth of cards, and it's basically $50 worth of cards plus a black market connection. So if, you can just sell that and keep the rest. If you want, yeah, if, you, if you're if you thinking, I want to buy a black market connection, just buy this deck. Yeah, it's it is, 30 bucks, but this deck is 50 bucks. Yeah, and it comes with awesome reprints like Grim Hireling, which is an amazing card. So awesome to see, like, these... When you put a card in one precon, it can stay up in price. When you put a card in two precons, it drives it down so mm -hmm. much, which is amazing. Let's keep doing that. Let's see black market connections in another deck next year so that it'll just be a $10 card, a $5 card. That's what we need. Selfless Spirit, Solid Reprints, Savine's Reclamation was getting up there in price. It's now like a budgety card, which mm -hmm. is really nice to see. Skull Clamp again. How Thanks. many times? We love it. Uh, as many times as you want. If you want to put this in every precon with Soul Ring, I am okay with that. Maxwood Nexus was also one of those cards that was getting up there in price. We're slowly starting to see these actual real commander cards that are printed not even a lot, like a year, two years ago, getting right into commander decks. Instead of waiting like four years. Which is so nice to see because these cards aren't crawling up in price to ungetability. Like Maxwood Nexus could have been $20, $30 if it wasn't reprinted because of how like it fits specifically into certain decks. Yeah, you don't want to hit the ungettability. That's when it really <laughs> gets rough. Mutavault is randomly expensive. I don't know why. Get rid of it and sell it. And War Room is a sweet card. Yeah, uh, it's nice reprints. New cards, Black Market Connections, solid. Deep No Terror Mancer, good. Seasoned Dungeoneer. A legacy staple. Uh, literally, uh, literally a legacy deck. Like, it's built around this card uh, and the other one, whatever it is. I can't think of it. Yeah, who cares? But uh, Wind Bloom of Yes, and also Burakos and Folk Hero, which you could swap out for Analia. You should. It's a really sick combo. Burakos it has all of the types and you're playing all the types, so you're just going to be drawing cards, hitting people, making like a thousand treasures, and just dealing damage. Yeah, this deck is really, really strong. A couple of duds, you know. Mardu Strike Leader. <laughs> okay, why? I Also, I hate that in my black-white deck I have a card that says Mardu on it. That's, that is a pet peeve to me. Uh, High Priest of Penance. Remember that one? No. When it is dealt combat damage or damage, you destroy an island permanent. No, what I meant to say is I don't want to remember Oh, that. well then forget <laughs> about it. Just uh, think about Solemn Recruit, the 2-2 two -two with Double Strike. That's in this deck. Why? I don't know. So bad. I thought for a second it might have been in the Obscura, and I was like, oh, why didn't we mention it? It would have been a dud there, too. <laughs> so here it is. Mana base, 20 basics, 9 fixers, 8 utility. That's about standard for this uh, type of deck, this this set of 4 D&D &D ones. Ramp is 8, removal is 10, card draw is 10, plus there's a little bit of like random graveyard card advantage. So pretty standard across the board. Maybe a little bit low on ramp? Okay, we had a couple rocks. That was it. Uh, this deck is, again, like we said, one of the best ones. I would switch the commanders personally there. Like, they are shockingly strong. Surprisingly good. It doesn't even look good. Even when it's in play, you're like, meh. And then you're just like, oh, I lose three? Okay, whatever. Oh, I lose four? Eh, whatever. Oh, you have eight treasures? Oh, no. It's like the losing is fine. I can deal with losing the life. You know what I can't deal with? The treasures and the like. The mana advantage generated. Maybe that's why, like, if you're running those as a commander, you don't have to add more ramp because this deck will ramp itself. Four toughness is also kind of annoying. It it's is. weird. I never really care about that, but this one is like, I want to kill it and I just can't. Yeah. This is a good deck. Great deck. 
second best deck of the year, Necron Dynasties. Zarek, the Silent King, is commanding this deck, which is filled with artifacts, recursion, and ways to self-mill. Yeah, this deck is really, really awesomely built. Do we have any complaints? Um, Not really, not much, because this deck really just is put together in such an awesome way. And what is really cool about this deck is this is a strategy that was not a strategy. Mono this black artifacts. Mono black artifact mill. Like, add all that together. This wasn't a deck. Now it's a deck purely because of this precon, which is even cooler. The original price was like $60 for this deck. You're going to have to spend 84 to get it right now. And I lied earlier because 116 is the highest price of any of these decks. That's amazing value inside of this deck. It's so awesome. You're getting stuff like Living Death. Darkness was an amazing reprint because it was like 15 bucks. Thought Vessel's back again. Reliquary Tower's back for the eighth time. And Endless Atlas is nice because it draws you some cards and it's like a budget card. Awesome reprints. I, Living Death and Darkness specifically are like two Sweet. thumbs up cards. Like I, Not that Darkness is good at Commander, but it, like you said, $15 will take it for sure. Living Death was like a $10 card. It's back to five again. Yeah, as far as new cards go, we got Canoptech Scarab Swarm. It's like the Graveyard Hate. Necron Deathmark is a cool little take on Ravenous Choops. We got the Spider that draws a bunch of cards. Their name is Death and Biotransference. Yes, uh, Biotransference is like ridiculous. Ooh, very interesting card. Very interesting and cool card. This deck just introduced tons of cool cards like that. This is an awesome... Uh, I, I'm very high on this There's one. like three different ways to build this Mono Black Artifact deck now, and it didn't even exist. Yeah, and it didn't exist before this. Duds... There's like Plasmomancer and Tomb Blade, but I'm not complaining about them too much because, like I said, if you're going to give me 40 new cards in the pre count, I'm okay if two, three, four of them are banned. Yeah, if there was like 10 duds, I'd be annoyed. But there was only two. It's okay to have a couple bad cards. The mana base, 30 basics. This is mono black, so that's okay. Seven utility. If you really want, if you really want, it already comes with a bajillion swamps. You can just add in the Cabal Coffers. Or if you're on a budget, Cabal Stronghold's like five, six bucks. Also, yeah. Uh, ramp, 11. Removal, 7. Card draw, 7. But the card draw being that low is okay because this is a deck that gets tons of advantage from its graveyard. Similar to Geese and Grolf, so I'm super happy to get card draw in the command zone and some card draw in the deck. All right, somebody pause the video before I say number one and put what it is. If you actually know, without having looked anything up, I will... Heart and pin your tweet. I will consider pinning it, but I'll also say, just like the Moxfield ad, you probably cheated. Not your tweet, though. We're going to pin your YouTube comment. <laughs> yeah. So, number one, the best deck of the year, it's Exit from Exile. Faldorn is the commander. I built Faldorn as a commander. Awesome. This deck's synergy is there. Hmm. That You will make a million wolves. The only thing that this deck is lacking, and it's a little bit, is it only has like one overrun. This deck wants more overruns than that, like because you want you're gonna go right with wolves. Just get more overruns in here, and this deck is almost perfect. It's so cool. Price of the deck fifty dollars when it first came out, thirty eight you can get it for right now. Total value of cards in the deck forty five. And a great note for this deck that you want something that'll tell you this deck is good. Twenty one of the cards in this precon, I made an un. No budget, no nothing. 21 of the cards make it into my um, non-budget, non high-power budget, deck. high power version of this deck. And I don't even play Soul Ring. Yeah, not even Soul Ring. There's like 33% of this just basically ports over into a super-tuned version of this deck. We got Jessica's Will as a reprint, three visits, and Nature's Lore off the bat. Like, okay. Okay, and again, we're getting a, this, the perfect thing. Like we mentioned, I mentioned the Jessica's Will thing before with these cards that are printed a year or two ago that we're getting right away. Thank you. Because Jessica's Woke was just going to keep creeping up and it's nice that we got it down to like 15 It's It's still like $15. It's still expensive, but it's not 30 or 40 where it could be. Yeah, new cards. We got Green Slime. I've, you know, there was a lot of... I've heard a lot of good things about the card. But, but lately I've heard nothing about the card, so I don't know. It's definitely in there. You could, you're going to open one if you have this deck. Nalafshni, and then Delayed Blast Fireball has just been brutal. But it's a very good Especially card. in this deck. I think, I, mean, all, I think all those cards are good. I want to try Green Slime because I've heard it's good, but... We'll have to try it. Yeah, I think it's a card I want to try for sure. For Duds, Venture Forth is terrible. That is not a real magic card at all. I don't know what that is. Just leave it out, and your friends won't even know you're playing 99 cards. And Greater Gargadon, if you're not a sacrifice deck, Greater Gargadon is butts. Like, yeah, it casts from exile. Do you want the card? No. No, it's it's a 10-9 that takes a million turns to come out unless you sacrifice good permanence. No, we ha we only have good permanence. Yeah, no thanks. Oh, you mentioned the deck is a little bit light on overruns. I found the next worst part. 23 basics, 9 fixers, 6 utility lands, but it's playing 1 Temple of the False God. It's one too many. It is one too many. And the land counter is a little high. You could probably cut down on 2 or 3 of those lands. Yeah, there's just so much. We got 17 ramp cards, 10 removal, and 10 card draw. 
But you also have a million different little ways to gain advantage. Like, oh, if Faldorn pitches the land and you draw a spell, well, that's pretty good for you. All the Cascades are two-for-ones. And then there's a bunch of, like, impulse one time, and then you get to cast it and then get whatever other triggers you get from that. This deck out of the box is going to go extremely wide, extremely easily. Play Faldorn, get value. That's what this deck does. And even though I didn't list all of them under the new cards, for the strategy specifically, it has a ton of awesome new cards for its strategy. Like the stupid green thing that can like exile a creature, then you can play it and you can play the adventure a, card. A creature. Yeah, exactly. That card isn't like this crazy good card they're going to play in a ton of decks. But for this deck, it's like a staple. It's super awesome. Super, super sweet. Yeah. And if you want to check out last year's pre cons, which there was 15 of, which is in so many, <laughs> go check it out. Peace out, Tribe Scouts.